So guys, I just want to welcome you to New Media Tools. Um, so I typically do not uh, do uh, Zoom meetings this early in the week. <clears throat> I like to kind of wait and see uh, what resonates throughout the week and your, your questions start to uh, come out. So I might move these to Thursday, uh, depending on uh, what, what works out for you guys. I know that this, this is really just kind of a meet and greet, little Q&A, because uh, you guys haven't really dove into uh, the assignments yet. Uh, but just to kind of give you guys a synopsis of what the class is, uh, this class is a jack of all trades, master of none, let's just say. Uh, we have, we at Full Sail have embraced the Adobe Creative Suite uh, in every aspect, any degree that we have here online or on campus, there is an opportunity for you to use a one, two, or three, or even all the softwares that uh, Adobe Suite has to offer. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of history behind where I came from, just to see how, how it varies. Uh, I went to college uh, in 1985, uh, and I got a full ride scholarship to go to art school. They didn't have computers back then. Everything was done by hand, airbrush, illustration, uh, pen and ink. So a lot of, uh, you know, I wanted to work in an advertising environment where I could use my illustrations to create advertisements for whatever it was. Um, once I finished, uh, I got an internship for uh, South Florida Magazine, as this was down in Miami. And uh, it, was a, it was a two week paid internship. And uh, because I had a lot of photography experience, they put me in the uh, dark room. Uh, so I was developing all the, all the pictures from the photographers I was using the enlargers with uh, the overlays to make sure that they, they went across the, uh, if it was a two page spread, the pictures could stretch across the two pages. <clears throat> uh, and I never forget on the last day of my internship, I was either gonna get fired or get hired. Um, not fired, but you know, my internship was over. Um, there was a bunch of commotion in the art department and I walk out there and I see people crying and uh, packing up their things. And the editor in chief basically laid off half of the art department. Uh, at the same time, UPS was coming in with these boxes that had this Apple, this Apple logo on them. And nobody knew what that logo was. I, I had no idea what it was. And uh, so this was 1987, yeah, 1987. And uh, so there's only 12 of us left Everybody else had left. There was about 30 people that, that were in the department. So basically the editor in chief says, you guys have a month to produce me a magazine digitally. And we all looked at each other like, uh, are we gonna get any help? And he's like, you're gonna have as much training as you can get. And because I was in the photography area, they threw me on Photoshop. Photoshop version 1.0. And that pixel software changed my life forever. Uh, I fell in love with the software, the, uh, the versatility of it. And, you, you know, back then, Photoshop didn't even have any layers. Uh, you could never undo anything. So once you were stuck to it, that was it. But the fact that I was able to manipulate color and pixels, exposure, all that, it, I, I thought I had a love affair with the software. <clears throat> so um, I stayed there for about six months. And, and then I got an interview with an ad agency in Atlanta. I was on my way up to Atlanta. I stopped in Orlando to visit a good friend of mine uh, from high school and I fell in love with Orlando and I never made it to Atlanta. I mean, I've, I've been there since then, but I'd never made it. Uh, I ended up getting a job here, one of the largest commercial printing companies, R.R. Donnelly uh, in Orlando. And they do printing for Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, pretty much every themed uh, entertainment that's in, that's in the country. And uh, I started doing color correcting photo manipulation and layout. And, uh, you know, that's where my career kind of got started. Um, I did move out West for a little while. Uh, I met my, uh, my wife and we head out, headed out to New Mexico. I uh, worked for a couple printing companies out there. Uh, we only stayed out there for about two years. Uh, I, I didn't want to come back. I fell in love with, with, with the Southwest. So I can see why Jonathan, you're, you're out there because it is unbelievable. Uh, 
God's country, I call it. It's just amazing. It is awesome. Yeah. And I had never seen snow before, which was crazy because the first time I went out, I, I, I had a little red pickup truck and I went out to go to work and I, I couldn't find it because the whole thing was covered in white. I called my boss and I said, I can't make it to work today. And he goes, shut up and get your butt in here. <laughs> go dig out your truck and go. So it was funny. When I got back, I was kind of a little bit burned out from uh, <clears throat> from the printing industry. So I, I, I answered this ad in the paper for this small little tech school in Winter Park for an instructor position teaching Photoshop. I was like, I can do this. So right when I got when I got there, it was 1994. They had just launched the two year associate's degree digital media program. So I was teaching Photoshop and then Illustrator and uh, loving every minute of it. But I didn't feel, I was only 26 years old. And, you know, I was teaching students that were 19, 20, 22, 24. And I didn't feel like I, I had enough to offer them. So I just decided that I need to get back in the industry and learn more. Uh, and uh, I landed my dream job for a theme park design company. And I, I was able to uh, jump right on to, they had just landed the contract for Islands of Adventure at Universal. We got all five islands with this company and they threw me out on Jurassic Park, uh, learning how to do animatronics and move the dinosaurs and get the scenes kind of set up. And it was an amazing, uh, you know, opportunity. From there, I went to Cat in the Hat. And then from there, I went to Spider-Man. We did the 3D uh, syncing of the uh, 3D movie uh, with the ride vehicles. Uh, then we went to Toon Lagoon Island with Popeye and uh, Ripsaw Falls. And, uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, then we, have to do it, we had to do it all over again in Japan. So we did Osaka, Japan. I was there for 18 months. Um, it was an amazing opportunity. I love Japan. Um, and then 9-11 hit. <clears throat> and then everything shut down. And uh, my, my, my boss and my company was like, we need to diversify or we're going to go under. So anybody have any ideas? And somebody threw out, hey, what about TV commercials and, you know, production? I was like, that sounds good. Anybody know how to do that? And everyone was like, no. All right, well, let's figure it out. So we went and started to uh, figure out how to produce, uh, how to shoot, how to edit, how to get all the, uh, you know, what we needed for production. And I stumbled across this software called After Effects. And I was hooked. If you, if you thought that I was in love with with Photoshop, I was more in love with After Effects. I had really just, so we, we grew our business on that side. So we actually, the company kind of split into two parts, the entertainment side for the theme park and then the production side for uh, content. And at one point we had about 42 employees, uh, audio editors, script writers, animators, motion people, uh, you name it, voiceover talent. And it just grew and grew and grew. And we were doing national commercials, regional, and then occasionally we would do the local, local guys. But it was just growing exponentially. And um, in 2009, <clears throat> uh, the entertainment side was having some problems financially. So they sold our side to a Canadian company. And the Canadian company came in and says, all right, we're moving everybody to Montreal. And I'm like, the hell you are. I wear flip-flops and shorts. <laughs> and right about that time, I was like, you know what? It's time for me to go. I went to go launch my own production company. And uh, I had a friend of mine at Full Sail says, hey, we need a motion designer, uh, instructor, or course director. I said, I can do both. So that's what I've been doing. I've been teaching uh, motion graphics uh, and uh, video production. And I've been running my business. Uh, so when I'm not teaching, I'm actually working. And I had an opportunity. I, I don't know if you guys know Peter um, here in this, uh, the MCBS degree. He offered me an opportunity to do a little bit of adjunct. And uh, so I'm here to uh, help you guys really just kind of get a good foundation on the software that you're going to learn. It's, it's four weeks. So I don't expect miracles from anybody. And we're, we have so many different levels, so many different degrees, you know, uh, you know, Ramos is, is, is here for, you know, for business and, and has an audio background. Jonathan's got more of a film, digital cinematography background. Brett, I'm not sure. What, what is your degree, Brett? 
The uh, digital cinematography as well. Okay. So you have that in your background. And then we have a new person. Is it Sakusen? Uh, yes, that's right. Wow, I said it right. Yeah, yes. you nailed it. Awesome. And what degree are you in? Uh, creative writing. Creative writing. So we, we have the gamut. So, you know, we have some folks that, you know, editing is going to be something that they're going to want to probably, you know, learn a little bit more about or have already learned more about. Um, but if you think about the softwares that you guys are going to be experiencing in this class, Illustrator, Photoshop, Premiere, and uh, what was the other one? Oh, uh, Premiere Rush. And also InDesign. Every one of those programs has a need for your for your industry. If it is uh, creating your own personal branding, if it's uh, creating a, a creative brief, uh, creative brief, uh, doing uh, doing a brochure for your own company, doing a poster for maybe a a uh, an independent movie that you're working on. You know, hold on one second, guys. My dog is whining. I want you guys to meet this ugly dog. Look at this thing. She's hideous, isn't she? She looks like a bat. <laughs> and this is Lucy. Bye, Lucy. <laughs> so anyway, so having even just a little bit of knowledge of the software, and, and I'm very used to tier teaching because I get people from different levels coming into my motion classes. Some come in that I've had the After Effects... <laughs> We got a battle royale going on. Chloe, I have a bulldog too. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, having that ability to truly understand just a little bit of the software and also depending on the age that you are because everybody not everybody learns the same way we we have a way of understanding full cell started back in the uh, early 80s understanding that everybody had different learning skills so either you were kinesthetic hands-on or you were audible or visual learner and we kind of put all three of those together to to give everybody an opportunity um, English is my second language. Can you believe that? I know it's really hard. My, my accent's really thick. What's your first? Spanish. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. So I was, I was raised in Central America in Honduras. Um, and uh, I was an army brat. My dad is, you know, was a really tall, six foot three, blonde hair, blue eyed guy. And he met this really tiny Honduran. <laughs> my mom, jet black hair, brown eyes, and olive skin. So you know, I, I spent my first 10 years, uh, you know, down there in school. And uh, when I came here to the States, you know, English is a mother. Let me tell you, <laughs> if you guys think that English is easy, it is not easy to learn. Um, but, and, and that's, I think, why I gravitated towards drawing so much is because I had such a struggle with the English language that I could, I could visualize my, my emotions, my feelings through my artwork. Uh, and for me, there's nothing like anything like, pen, you know, putting pencil and paper together and, and coming up with creativity. Uh, and I still think it's important for conceptual designers to be able to conceptualize their ideas before they even go onto the computer. A lot of people now just kind of skip that process and they just go right into the computer and uh, just, just start designing. But there is something to be said about uh, thumbnails and, and just trying different things and seeing how they flow. Um, but I, one goal that I want you guys to promise me, no matter how frustrated you are with the software, I can teach you the software. That's not a problem, you know, because of the fact that it is really just a, uh, a quick, a quick 
brief introduction to each one of these. And, and one of them, you might go, wow, I can't believe I'd never even heard about this. Or maybe you have heard of all of them already. Um, but giving you that option to later on, you know, pursue uh, to get more classes and, and different os uh, options of, of the software is, is something that you can definitely do for sure. And you can talk to me about different, uh, different outlets that you can get. Uh, you guys definitely have access to uh, the LinkedIn learning uh, to get more in depth about the software. But what I guess what I was saying is that each week is going to feel like it's going to be flying by and you're going to you're going to hit all of your your assignments and then you're going to go oh my god this week is almost over as long as you stay in communication with me and i will i'm going to put in here in the uh, chat room my cell phone number all you have to do is and i'm just going to use you ramos just because you're you're on the screen right now um is ramos is having problems with uh assignment number three all you got to do is uh send me a text and say, hi, this is Ramos. I need more time. And I won't even ask why, I'll be like, okay, you get more time. If you make the, if you make the effort, then I will reward you that with that effort with you getting more time, okay? Um, but as long as you complete the assignments, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect at all. I just want you to walk away and understand the concept and the idea of what we are asking you to do. Um, the assignments are not hard. They are very, they're, they're, they're methodical as far as how we've kind of put them together. If you can read a little bit and just kind of watch the, uh, the how to's, uh, it will definitely push you through it. Um, this class was designed as a general class, meaning that it is hitting uh, a lot of different uh, topics and areas for, because we have, a, we have a smattering of degrees that are coming through here. So, Illustrator is going to cover logo design, you know, uh, Photoshop is going to cover a little bit of photo manipulation, maybe a little bit of color treatment for your photos. Uh, a way to InDesign is going to help you figure out how to lay things out. Okay. And then uh, Adobe Premiere is going to help you figure out how to, uh, how to edit videos for social media or for broadcast or for your website. Okay. Uh, After Effects will definitely give you some onboard graphics that you can so do some really nice transitions between your video clips or using Illustrator to illustrate a, you know, a small cartoon. I had a student uh, four years ago. She came to my class and she's, and, and I used to, when I was on campus and we haven't been on campus for about six months now, but I would always ask them, you know, what's your dream job? And she says, I want to work for Adult Swim. She was, she was absolutely, you know, she was, a, she was a cartoonist. She wanted to create her own stories and she wanted to, you know, work for Adult Swim. Guess where she's at right now? Adult Swim. She, she planned a course, she said it, and she says, I don't care how long it takes me to get there, but I got there. And uh, sometimes I have her, uh, when she comes, she, her, her parents still live in Orlando. So when she comes and visits, she lets me know. And I invite her to class and she sits in and she talks to the students about, you know, perseverance, dedication, passion, you know, which are all the things that you guys all have. It's just, you have to kind of tap into it. You know, timing is, is of the essence, you know, you don't want to peak too soon and then you burn out. Um, you know, the fact that you guys, have, you know, a few of you guys have come back for a second degree means that you, you value yourself enough to, to continue your education and to, to figure out what's the next step. Uh, we do not offer doctrines though. So once you get your master's, you're dead. We're, we're gonna kick you out of here. <laughs> I mean, even though I would love to call Dr. Ramos, <laughs> the audio God. <laughs> but, um, you know, even, um, I know that a lot of the, even a lot of the master's degree programs, they are off, they ask you to do uh, creative briefs, they ask you to do business plans, they ask you to do presentations. And these are all things that are great, but you know, this market, it's very competitive out there. And the edge that you have over, you know, other colleges or other universities that offer the same degrees is that you have a visual narrative that you can add to your presentation that is going to wow your, your, your target audience. So having that ability to, uh, to bring in visuals, audio, 
uh, sound effects, whatever it is. Think about it. I mean, we're all, we all want to be entertained. You know, I mean, if, if I'm probably the worst at it, I'll start watching a show on Netflix. And if in the first 15 minutes, if I'm not wowed, I move on to the next. And that's probably, I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't, I should give people, I should give shows a little more opportunities to, to get me, but that's just me. I, I, I don't have time to, to waste six episodes and then, oh, it's finally getting good. It doesn't hit me at the first one. <laughs> I'm moving on. So um, speaking of, you guys ever watched the, the, the Netflix show Goliath? I have not. I, 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 had, um, I had to watch an episode uh, for a class, I think. Oh my God. What, what a great, if you like law, you know, law and uh, corruption, great show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was an episode um, where uh, these two guys, they, they had did a, a sound cover and somebody else used their sound cover, put it in their commercial, and they went at legal laws. Oh, yeah. But interesting. Yeah. You know, intellectual property, uh, I, I tell this story only because it's a very long, it's a very good life lesson. I do not tell this story because I am trying to brag in any way because I have nothing to brag about. I was 19 years old. And when I was, when I was in college, the drinking age was 18. So uh, I was 19 years old. I was at a bar down in South Beach, hanging out. I was waiting for some friends to show up. I'm just having a gin and tonic. Uh, talking to the bartender and uh, this guy pulled up in the bar stool next to me and we started just chatting. And when I, I have this tendency that when I, when I chat with people, I start to doodle on cocktail napkins. I don't know why I just do. And he, he gave me this idea. He, he started talking about the fact that he was here from the West coast, Northwest. And they were looking for, uh, they were looking for ideas to expand their, their fast food restaurants here uh, with a new concept in the, uh, in the East Coast. So he was kind of trying to get investors and capital, uh, venture capitalists and stuff like that. And so I just, I started doodling some ideas just in my head of, of, of different, uh, different ideas of, of a concepts for a fast food restaurant. It, it, I knew it was a burger place. So I just started going down that line. And uh, next thing you know, you know, he's like, what do you got there? And I said, I said, I was just doodling some things. He's like, let me look at it. He goes, wow. He goes, these are kind of cool. And, uh, and then he's like, Hey, he goes, and so my friend showed up and he's like, Hey, let me buy your, your, your round for you. And, uh, you know, buy a round for your friends. I was like, that's cool. And he's like, here's my card. Here's my number. But he never gave me the card or the number. And I turned around and said hi to my friend and he was gone. And guess what else was gone? My cocktail napkin gone. Fast forward two years, I'm driving down Biscayne Boulevard in Miami. And I see my concept in reality. And uh, it was checkers. So I was blown away that I, but I, you know, but I, I didn't have a leg to stand on. I didn't even have, I don't have a cocktail napkin. He had everything. So that's when I grew up. I grew up very quickly that day. And I realized that any type of communications I have with any potential client, even though I didn't even know it was a client, um, don't have it at bars, you know, and uh, don't do anything until, you know, you have something in writing or you have some type of contract of some sort. Um, so intellectual property is, is huge. Um, it's just, it's one of those things. It's a life lesson. And I, and I tell that story because a lot of, a lot of, a lot of students do a lot of freelance and they do a lot of work with, with uh, bands and do a lot of work with, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many students in my degree, you know, somebody will reach out to them and says, Hey, can you do a logo for me? And then they call me and they say, well, how much should I charge for the logo? And I said, well, what are you worth? And then they kind of stopped. They're like, well, what do you mean? What am I worth? I'm like, well, what do you, what, what is your time and your design worth to you? I said, cause if you're going to charge them $50 for a logo, I said, then what happens is it sets a precedence across the board that all logos should be only $50, you know? I said, you need to ask some questions like, where is this logo going? Is it going on your website? Is it going on a one-time uh, brochure? Is it going to go and is it going to go broadcast, you know, locally, nationally? You know, what, what, what is it, you know? And then once you start to find out more information about 
where this is going, then you have a better understanding of where and what you should be able to charge for that logo. You know, um, don't under don't undervalue your your conceptualizing power to come up with something that is going to be uh, effectively giving somebody a brand. You know, same thing with music. You know, somebody comes and says, "Hey, I just need a riff. Just give me a riff, Ramos." And and so Raymond goes, turns around and goes, boop, 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 And then he says, here you go. It'll be a thousand dollars. And they're like, yeah, but it's just a riff. Yeah, but that's, that's my, that's my, that's what I charge because I'm that good. And you're going to, you're going to love that riff. And then you're going to come back and you're going to want more. I'm not saying that a thousand dollars is a reasonable amount for a riff. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that if you say, yeah, okay, it's free. No big deal. You also have to value, like I have clients that I've had for literally seven, eight years. And sometimes they'll come in and they'll say, hey, Dan, I got a rush job. You know, I'm really, really, really sorry. I, I need this tomorrow. And then I look at it and go, okay, well, how much money have, have these guys made me? Okay, last year I made about 35,000 from this client. The year before I made 40, you know. Uh, this year I probably make around because of COVID, I'll probably make around 50,000 because I don't know, I've just been very fortunate. Sure, no problem. You will have it tomorrow morning and I will give it to them for free because they are a valued customer of mine and customer service is everything, you know? You know, you guys have heard of the, the whole thing is that the, you know, the client the client or the customer is always right to a certain extent. But if they value you and you value their, um, partnership, collaboration, whatever it is, then, then it, it's all about communication. It's all about understanding, you know, what their needs are and what can you deliver? You I, I, I could kind of speak on that too. Um, Cause after I graduated in 2017, but I always had my nine to five and, you know, I thought that Opening a studio is just you just buy a look, you know. I actually started with the focus right that full sale sent me. And like, yeah, it is a studio. But then after a while I started asking and questioning myself, like, why I'm not getting this industry sound? I went to this industry school, right? So I started doing research and I started investing in more better, you know, equipment. Yeah. However, I met I met one guy. He came, to, he, he, he was in front of me. He was, I mean, the guy can talk so good. And he calling people from Atlantic Records and this and that. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm seeing this is good. He tried to bring some contract for me to do some mixing stuff for him and this and that, whatever. I'm like, nah, you know, it doesn't sound right. So he FaceTimes me. Uh, two days later with a whole like briefcase full of money. Like I told, I'm like, man, I, that don't mean nothing to me. However, so I met somebody else through through him and I didn't really know if I should have took the risk with him, but I did. And they gave me like my first official like record. He's with Sony. Um, they gave me my credits and everything. So I ended up mixing a record for a young kid, uh, Garvin Magnus, and I didn't know who, who he was. And then after the fact, I did some research. The kid has like 1.5 million, you know, this and that. And the record went, I don't know, crazy. Really? In two months, it went like over 5 million, <clears throat> just off one platform. Wow. And he, he you know, he, he helped me. That's how I feel. If, but if I didn't take the risk, you know, and he's a client, like you says, and so, sometimes that happens. He, hey, I need this tomorrow. And, you know, yeah. you just do it. Get it. <clears throat> sometimes you just got to follow your gut. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes those guys can, they, they can sell ice cubes to Eskimos, you know, and then you're like, okay, well. Uh, but that, that's, that's what their business is. They are schmoozers, you know, when it comes to getting what they need. You know, they're producers. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what producers do. They, they, they go out and they try to hustle 
the best price for the best gear for the best sound you know um i'm glad you were able to cut your teeth on it you know the first time i'm hoping that you know that that lesson will move move your company even more you know into the into the uh, the black yeah but, you know everybody has a story everybody has um uh, failed opportunities that they probably go, Oh my God, I wish I would have done that, you know, or thank God I didn't do that, you know, or so there's always going to be something out there where, and the more and more that I see how the industry is changing, um, you know, everything is going mobile, uh, especially for, you know, I mean, I, I can work anywhere. I can work in my car. I can work. I, I can edit anywhere. You know, I can go to a Starbucks and edit if I need to. Um, but there's always going to be that limitation and people will, you know, the thing about, and this is the whole thing about people shooting video like this instead of like this, you know, and at first it used to bother me a lot. I mean, I was really, really upset that people would, would provide footage for me, but it's what the people around accept is what is acceptable in the industry, you know, People are shooting for TikTok. People are shooting for Instagram, for Facebook. They're going to shoot vertically. So how do I how do I capitalize on that vertical shot? You know, um, I have to design some some blurred borders for it or something like that so I can get the shot to look decent. <clears throat> and then I or I educate my clients and say, listen, you know, this is great, but if you turn it this way, it'll be a little bit better. You know taking a little extra time to, uh, to educate. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been handed and I call it a polished turd uh, to try to fix from somebody else. You know? And uh, it just, you know, by taking a little extra time and I'll tell you a quick story. Um, my son who is now 17, last year he turned 16 and he asked me, he's like, hey dad, can you, uh, can, can we get like five of my friends and go over to New Smyrna Beach, get a hotel, uh, we'll get to two hotel rooms and, and you know, you can just kind of hang and, and relax since you haven't had a vacation in a while. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Uh, two weeks before that, I had gotten a call from a client that I hadn't seen in a long time and I haven't worked with him in a couple of years. And he says, hey, Dan, he goes, I got this really cool gig for you. Are you interested? And I said, well, what is it? He goes, well, it's, it's for head and shoulders. He goes, we're, we're shooting some motion commercials um, and uh, you know, I wanted, he, he does photo retouching, he doesn't do motion. So I was always, he's kind of a go-to guy for motion. Uh, I said, yeah, I said, when, when, is, when do you need it? He goes, I need it in about a week. I said, okay, I said, I just wanna let you know. I said, in two weeks, I said, I'm, I'm leaving for the weekend with my son and some of his friends over for a beach weekend. And uh, he's like, oh, he goes, you'll be done by then. So that week goes by, <laughs> gone. I haven't heard from him. I'm like okay so we're getting into week two and uh so i sent him a, a, an email saying hey john uh what's going on with head and shoulders and he's like i'm still trying to get everything together for you they're, they're doing the shoots now for the video uh he goes you'll have it by wednesday i said okay well, that means that i have two days to turn it around for you i said i'm going to charge you a rush he's like okay no problem he goes it's my fault he goes not really my fault he goes it's the client's fault so they're going to pay for it like it's got to air on monday I'm like, okay. Thursday comes around, nothing. So I'm packing up the truck Friday afternoon and uh, John calls me. He goes, I got everything. I said, I said, I have bags in hand and I'm leaving. He goes, no, man. He goes, I, he goes you need to do this. I said, I told you. I said, I'm, I'm going away for the weekend for my son's birthday. He goes, I'll pay you triple. I'm like, for what? For, for me to cancel the trip and he goes i'll pay you double i said okay i grab my laptop i grab a tv table and i grab a, a box and i'll tell you why i grabbed the box here in a second so we uh, we go he sends me a link to his uh, google drive and then i found out that everything was shot on a red camera i'm like I don't know if you guys have ever used a red camera before, yep. but uh, the footage is a, is a pain in the ass to transcode. Okay. So I'm like, all right, fine. All right. So we get to the hotel room. 
So the first thing I do, I check the boys in, they go down to the beach. I start downloading these monster files. Okay. Each, each clip is like three gigs. Thank God I brought an external hard drive. So I download everything. Uh, boys are checking in with me every so often. I got coolers full of drinks and food for them. So they're just having a great time. They're down by the pool. They're hanging out. You know, they're 16 years old. They're going to do 16 year old stuff. We're right on the beach so I can look out my window and see him, you know. So I'm editing that night and uh, and he wanted me to upload some preliminaries. So I said, okay. So I uploaded some preliminaries and they're like, well, we I love him. Go ahead and continue with the other three. I had to do three 15 second head and shoulder promos. The next day we had plans to be at the beach all day. So I set up a canopy, my chair, a TV table, my laptop, and I cut out a makeshift uh, like box so that the uh, the salt air and the wind wouldn't wouldn't. So I sat there and edited on the beach, and I got it all done, and I got paid double, and uh, turned around and bought my son a, a new Jeep for his birthday with that money. <laughs> so, um, but it just goes to show you is like you know how far are you willing to go for customer service. You know, if you, you know, luckily I was, I was hunkered down at a hotel, you know, imagine if I was, you know, I mean, I, I could probably, I mean, that's just the thing is that my business, I could do, I could do it on a cruise ship if I wanted to, I'd have to pay for the Wi-Fi or pay for, you know, extra, you know, extra data so that I can upload these files to their, you know, to their FTP site or, or, or OneDrive. But, you know, everyone here has the capabilities of doing things remotely, you know, Creative writing for uh, Saku, Saku, Sakusin. Did I say that right again? Yes. All right. Uh, you know, um, Brett and Shanigan, I mean, you guys both can edit and shoot. You know, you can, I mean, you, I've done remote shooting before with my drone. Um, and, uh, but definitely there's something to be missed about, you know, being there as a director. Um, and I've done remote, I've hired people to go and shoot for me and, and me being on FaceTime while they're shooting. I'm like, all right, you know, do a pan here, you know, shoot over here. Let me get this, you know, do a, do a close up of this shot. You know, you, in a pinch, you can do things like that. You know, I mean, it just happens. Um, but the tools are getting so much easier. You can now also open up team projects so that everybody can have access to the files. Uh, on the cloud. Uh, I still, the cloud for me is still a little apprehensive just because of the file sizes that I use on a regular basis. Um, but, you know, it, it's, the struggles are more now about collaborating with the right people, making sure that everyone is being heard, making sure that there is a cohesive message. But, you know, at the end of the day, all of us have one thing in common is we are all storytellers in our own way. And as long as we tell the story, either with visuals, with music, with words, um, we're still storytelling. You know, that story arc still has to be there. That three act series has to be there, that, that opening, middle and closing in any situation, you know, creative writing or shooting or, you know, I call it in shooting, I call it doing the dance where you go from an establishing shot to a medium shot to a close up and back out, you know? So it's not just like surveillance camera footage, you know? Um, I learned, um, I have a client right now, his name is Ed Bookbinder. He has been, he's been a videographer for almost 50 years. And he started when, uh, you know, you had to carry those huge tape uh, backup battery belts and VHS tapes and, um, you know, he just, he's, he's a legend here in Orlando and, uh, I was able to work with him on a couple of projects and now I, I, I work with him every week now and we shoot these, um, these things called day in the life videos for, uh, some attorneys that are in town that are pretty high end attorneys. Um, and it's really, it does, you know, it's about the struggles that people have when they get into accidents and it's, it's a day in their life to show the jury that. They're not just a numbered case for the insurance that they're actually, um, you know, they have loved ones that take, you know, that take care of them every day. And it, 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 they're sad. Every one of them is sad. You know, I, I come home every night with my eyes just 
bloodshot red from crying because it's like you know you can't cry in front of them but you try to be their advocate and get their story and it is a story no matter what yes we might enhance the music and make a little more tear jerky for the audience you know for the jury but end of the day their words are their story and we just capture it and edit in a way that is you know cohesive and understanding for the jury to kind of understand it a little bit better but you know it's it's in every you know there's no special effects there's no uh there's no you know creative transitions it's just they're the most they're mainly hard cuts or dissolves because you don't want to do you don't want to jazz up like a like a wedding video something that is you know heartfelt and so it's it's knowing when to, when to pull back knowing when to add when to throttle up you know and get get what you need for for your pieces sometimes I, i'm a firm believer that it, it, I, I love pixar because i think that any one of their movies they could have done in 2d and it would have been just as powerful mm. and i uh, love pixar yeah i mean that 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 goes to show you that there was no compromise to the story you know you ever watch a movie and you're like you know the effects were great but the, the, there's no dialogue there's no story mm. you know, there's no uh backstory on the characters you're like who is this guy you know so it's one of those things where it's like it is an art form to 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 write creatively and to have dialogue that is not how do you put it it doesn't like continue how it was previously it's like a new add-on new interest new interest yeah because toy story like i thought that same thing because i'm a huge fan of toy story and i was like how are they going to do toy story 4 and uh it was it was awesome yeah it, it was so funny you know new characters so yeah forky was one of my favorites yeah it was funny i love forky but you know but it, it it really resonated in fact i made a comment my daughter left for college last year and uh i looked up and i said are you gonna take smelly bear with you or is he gonna sit on the shelf until you get back and she's like he's not woody <laughs> i'm like, <laughs> I'm like He's on the shelf collecting dust. He is Woody. You know, I said, so she's like, fine, I'm going to take him with me. So now he sits on her bed. I'm like, okay, well, at least he gets to see her, you know. But it's just one of those things where it's like when stories like that resonate and they become pop culture and involved in your life, it's almost a reverse, reverse effect because they were actually simulating what, what our real life is. So it kind of comes full circle. You know, so. But anyway. Enough of me talking. You guys want to talk a little bit? Because my throat is killing me. Somebody tell me a story. Um, I, I guess I could. I guess I could tell you a story about a a movie I did a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, so I've I've been a movie extra for like pretty much my entire filming career and acting career. So. Like when I get involved, um, I did Eminence Hill, which is a Western movie. And I thought it was hilarious because they filmed it here at Pioneer History Museum. And I didn't know a lot of the actors, you know, I didn't know a lot of these big people who were coming into this movie. And uh, I was kind of nervous because I'm like, for one, I live in a cowboy, like Western state, Arizona, you know, freaking desert. And yeah. I don't know how to be a cowboy, you know, and, <laughs> and they started getting me into like horse riding and shooting blanks out of pistols, like these old revolvers and stuff. Yeah. And um, I, I was so nervous because I was like, I'm working with Barry Corbin, Lance Hamrickson, Dominique Swain, uh, like all these guys who've done like so many things. And, um, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I thought it was funny because I, you know, I was told like, Hey man, like what if these guys don't like me, you know? Cause like, I don't have a reputation as big as them. And they're like, just go put on your personality, just go out there, have fun with it. And, you know, and it, it was like my first time doing a Western movie and they dressed me up like, um, you know, they're like, they gave me like a black hat and like this white t-shirt and we we're supposed to be representing like some event back during the times of like Noah's Ark. You know, so it was like, yeah, I know it's weird. It's weird. You'll have to go see it. Uh, the director had this really interesting idea for him and until, but um, I didn't know how to ride horses, you know, so like I fell off of the horse a couple of times. 
I didn't really know like a lot of that stuff. So I, I thought it was crazy because, and you always, when you're on camera, you always like think to yourself, like, did I do that right? Like, you're not always going to have a director who tells you, you know, oh, you know, like he's not going to waste his time on an extra and tell you, oh yeah, you look good on the camera, this and that. He's just going to film. You're going to be cute on action scene and you're just going to do it. Right. You know, so you don't, you don't know like how it comes out. And, you know, with the small parts that I was in, like I looked at myself, I was like, you know, with all that worry, I was like, oh, it freaking came out way better than I thought, you know. Unless you hear the director say cut. Roll yeah. Through, you know, do it again. What you do, we did like 18 takes on like every scene. And these are big star actors. Like, yeah. you know, you look at Barry Corbin's history. He's not a guy that really messes up scenes and stuff like that. Right. Like you, you learn something about 70 year old actors and they nail it far better than anybody else. And, and it's true in Hollywood, the older you are, the better you are. Like that is, that is so true. You don't hit your prime until you're like 40, 50 years old. Like, I don't care what anybody says that is the prime mark for acting and me being 30 years old, I have a long way to go, you know? So like, and I'm still going to be acting for a while. So like these, these movies, I'm a comedy guy who films comedy shows. That's, you know, like all my stuff is comedy. And then you throw me into a Western movie, <laughs> you know, like that's serious, you know, it's, I don't know. That was a crazy story to me, all, all the action scenes. And, yeah. You know, it's funny. Sometimes some of the com the best comedians make the best dramatic actors. I mean, if you look at Rob, oh yeah, Hines or Jim Carrey, you know, some of the shows mm -hmm. that they've done is it's it's crazy how good they are. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, I I don't mind sharing some clips with you guys as some demo reels, just because I think they're really funny. You know, like I I was nervous doing some of them because you know when you take a step away from acting for a while and you come back to it, you wonder if you still got it. You know, like are yeah. you still gonna be that same guy? And uh, I did a scene where they brought, um, you know, it's like a customer service scene where we were in a call center and somebody, they did a potluck, but the brownies that somebody brought were by mistake and they had, they were laced with marijuana. So they were marijuana brownies. And so we had to play a scene in the call center where everybody was high as hell after the potluck and the boss was there. And it was so funny. That scene just came out so awesome and people just credited me for that they're just like man that was you were so stupid in there and i'm like yeah you gotta be you gotta be funny to play stupid things you know yeah. very mm -hmm. true yep <clears throat> so Kusin, where are you from again i'm from georgia usa georgia usa what city uh, savannah oh my daughter's in savannah i love okay. that town i love that town you ever been to Little Duck Diner? No, I don't do a lot of. No. Yeah, I don't do a lot of socializing. Oh, do you live in the historic area? Or you live in the outskirts. Um, no, now I'm staying over on um, kind of like the south area, just like staying with my aunt. Uh huh. I went there. This is my fourth time there, and I finally I have this thing. You guys are gonna find. Out. I have this thing about tugboats. I love tugboats. Uh, really i eventually want to retire and own a tugboat <clears throat> and, and still do my work which is great um, what would you do with that tugboat i would tug things <laughs> 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 i would i would go up and down the river and i would i would sell my services to push and tug you know um but anyway so i saw my first tugboat when i was down there on the river uh it was cool really cool do you mind if I ask a question? You may. Um, and this is actually to, um, and I hope, I, I know that we may not have a lot of time, but I'm, I'm very curious because um, I always find it interesting. I hear so much passion from you and from Jonathan and from Ramos. And the, I guess I kind of want to know if it would be possible for you guys to share with me um, what drives you like when did you realize like I, listening to Jonathan talking about how he was like you know he's doing like the horses and all stuff like that these are things that he probably never imagined he would do and things like that or Ramos with having to um invest in all this stuff and kind of do the extra go the extra mile how did you know like when was what was your what was that moment for you where you were just like yeah this is my thing and I'm going to pursue it fervently well I think for me 
and I can't speak for John, uh, Jonathan or Ramos, but the fact that I found a career that I could um, draw and design and get paid for um, was the start. But because of the fact that I've kind of gone in so many different directions, I've actually had it happen to me a couple of times. Um, the first time it, it happened was when I learned, when I, when I started learning Photoshop and I said, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to, this is my job that I can actually get paid pretty well to manipulate pixels. Uh, the second time was when I was, uh, standing there in the middle of Jurassic park ride, moving a three ton dinosaur with a joystick and a, and a console and saying, who, who, who gets this opportunity to, to do stuff like this, you know? And, and I think a lot of it was, is that I never said, no, I can't. Mm. Uh, so if you go into any situation, if it, if it is approached to you and says, Hey, I want you to do this, then say, yeah, I'll do it. You might be scared out of your mind that you don't know how you're doing it. Like, you know, like, like, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan with, with horseback riding, you know, I mean, with that, what's the worst that can happen? You could fall and break your neck and die. Okay. But uh, <laughs> for me, it was, it was more of, okay, well, what's the worst that can happen? I can try this. It won't work. I might spend a, a, a night or two, you know, without sleep and keep trying it uh, until the point where, you know, I can actually become comfortable. Nowadays, think about it. What is at your absolute disposal? 24-7. The internet? Kind of the internet. You can find out anything if you just search for it enough. Um, you know, I know that, and I'm, ne I'm never, you're never going to hear from my lips if you have a question and I say, go YouTube it. You'll never hear that from my lips. But if I have a clogged sink or if I have an issue with my car, I'm going to go YouTube it. And I'm sure that somebody out there has had the same issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is a, there is a vast amount of knowledge that's out there and people are dying to share that knowledge with you. Uh, so it's really the, the basics of your passion. It, it starts from a spark and that spark then escalates to a flame. And finding out where that spark and flame kind of happen is really your happiness. Because if, if let's say I was to, you, you've heard that old cliche, you know, if you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Okay. It's actually true. Um, I will, if let's say, for example, if I had a choice of, doing what I'm doing here now or giving it all up, making six figures, uh, selling life insurance policies. Okay. So maybe I'll have extra money to buy a, a new boat, maybe a second house, but guess what? Eight hours a day selling life insurance. You know, you have to kind of look at it from a standpoint that you guys have an opportunity. You guys, have gone down the creative pathway of saying, I don't want to do that normal nine to five job. You know, I want to live and breathe my creativity, maybe writing stories, script writing, creative writing, whatever it is, uh, cinematography, audio, audio business, you know, entertainment business. But my, my kids both have followed in my footsteps. They, they have both, uh, they have both are starting to go out into careers. One is going into film and the other one is going into uh, sports marketing because he loves sports, but he wanted to get into it on the side of the broadcasting side so that he could, you know, do his thing, shooting or editing or whatever it is, you know, but he wants to be around sports. So, you know, and my daughter has been with me ever since she was five years old. I brought her to a video shoot and she got the shooting bug and, you know, now she's doing cinematography and, and she wants to, to be a film you know, DP and, and all that. She wants to do it all. She wants to learn every aspect of, of making films, if either if it's a small production or large production or whatever. But um, 
And she knows that she will always have a job with me if, in case she needs to come home. And I think she's probably going to stay up in Georgia area, but she really loves it up there. Um, but, you know, you never know. She could come and, and, and work for my company. I, I, I don't know. You know. I don't know if she wants to work with her dad. <laughs> I didn't want to work with my dad. <laughs> um, she didn't even want to go to the school that I taught at. So she went off to another school. So it's just one of those things, you know. But did that answer your question? Yes. So just you, that- you got it spot on too, Dan Walker, when you said a, a spark ignites the fire. You know, it's got to be something you're passionate about and you have to draw that energy within yourself, you know. And uh, it took me a while to be comfortable with people knowing that I'm a weirdo, you know, like doing all these stunts and just being who I am, you know. It's just something you you just roll with, but you learn to love it. And um, getting acceptance from people was probably the hardest thing to do, especially when you're young, you're like half the age of all these people who have been doing it for 40, 50 years, you know, and um, you just you just kind of get out there and you get your feet wet. And I think that's what keeps you motivated is that, you know, like I, I'm a type of guy who loves adventure. You know, like every new adventure, every new challenge is just it's something that keeps me away from boredom, you know, and like who wants to play the same character in a movie all the time? You know, I mean, maybe some do, you know, but like you kind of want to be challenged, you know, you kind of want to do new stunts or have new ideas for a sequel or even a prequel, you know, it's just um, you just you just kind of find that within yourself. Uh, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you have to go to school for a long time before you find out what your your catch is. And uh, I've done the whole riding scene. I've done that too. And then I was like, you know what? Um, I thought I was going to be a business lawyer. I thought I was going to go to law school. And then I'm just like, hey, you know what? These people are telling me I'm, I'm a funny guy. My personality is great. I need to pursue acting. And they gave me that uh, ability to go out there and push for something more like this where I get to film my own ideas and uh like you said a spark ignites a fire and that's how it just goes you know and you gotta stoke the fire yep keep it going um all right guys well it's uh, 905 um so I think uh I think what we'll do is we'll do another one Thursday night and and then we can keep keep the Thursday night theme going that way it gives you guys a little bit of time to uh, to work on your assignments. And if you have any questions or concerns, we can address them there. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Sounds well, good. Thank you for coming tonight. I enjoyed. Yeah. It's nice to meet you all. Yeah. It's uh, nice to meet you all. Thank you so much instructor. I appreciate it. No the problem. Speech and everything. Good night guys. All right. All right. You too. All right. Good night guys. All right.